My name is Kath Edwards and this video is part of the Community Group Folks Kindful Cafe project, sharing the folklore of Shropshire. So get yourself a cuppa, watch and join in by posting on our Facebook page. Today I'm going to be talking about the work of Mary Webb, who included a lot of Shropshire folklore in her books and in her poems. We know that she read the work of Charlotte Byrne. This book, Shropshire Folklore, A Sheaf of Gleanings, was written by Charlotte and it was based on the work of Georgina Jackson, another Shropshire folklorist. I'll be referring to this in a moment. Today I'm going to be talking about the book Precious Bane. Now Precious Bane is set in the early 19th century and it's narrated by a young woman, Prue Sarn. Prue lives with her mother and her brother Gideon on a farm in remote Shropshire. And the precious bane of the title refers to Prue's hair lip, her hair shotten lip, as it's expressed in the book. And Prue's mother believes, as people did at the time, that she had a child with a hair lip because when she was carrying the baby, a hair ran across her path. But the precious bane of the title, perhaps it also refers to Prue's brother Gideon, her older brother Gideon, and the bane of his life is his overwhelming desire for money. Well, quite close to the start of the book, Prue's and Gideon's father dies. And just before I go on to read to you from the book about the funeral, I just want to refer to something that Charlotte Byrne included in A Sheaf of Gleanings, and that's sin eating. In the old days, people believed that if you died without having a chance to confess your sins to a priest or a minister, so if you died suddenly, then you died with your sins still upon you. And if you had your sins still upon you, then you were in the hands of Satan and your ghost would not rest. It would walk abroad in the places with which you were familiar. And so there were very poor people at the time who would pawn their own souls for the little crust of bread, perhaps a sup of wine, possibly a few coins that they were given for their role of sin eating. And so they would attend the funeral and Food, usually bread, was passed over the coffin, it was passed over the corpse and it was accepted by the poor person, the sin eater. And by eating the bread and drinking the wine, they were symbolically taking on the sins of that person. But they were also compromising their own soul. Well, in the book, Precious Bane, when we come to the funeral, of Prue and Gideon San's father, we see how Gideon manipulates the situation to his own ends. Before the passage I'm about to read, Gideon refuses to allow his mother to employ a sin eater to come to the funeral to take on the sins of their father. At the coffin foot, was our little pewter measure full of wine and a crust of bread with it, but nobody touched them. Then Sexton stepped forward and said, Be there a sin eater? And mother cried out, Alas, no, woe's me. There is no sin eater for poor Sam. Gideon gainsaid it. Now it was still the custom at that time, in our part of the country, to give a fee to some poor man after a death, and then he would take bread and wine handed to him across the coffin, and eat and drink, saying, I give easement and rest to thee, dear man, that ye walk not over the fields, nor down the byways, and for thy peace I pawn my own soul. Then a strange, heart-shaking thing came to pass. 
Gideon stepped up to the coffin and said, There is a sin eater. Who then? I see none, said the sexton. I will be the sin eater. He took up the little pewter measure full of darkness and he looked at mother. But turn over the farm and all to me if I be the sin eater, mother, he said. No, no, sin eaters be accursed. What harm? To drink a sup of your own wine and chumble a crust of your own bread? But if you dunna care, let be. He can go with the sin on him. No, no, leave him go free, Gideon. Let him rest, poor soul. You be in life and young, but him cold and helpless in the power of Satan. He went with all his sins upon him, in his boots, poor soul. If there's none else to help, let his own lad take pity. And you'll give me the farm, mother. Yes, yes, my dear. What be the farm to me? You can take all and welcome. Then Gideon drank the wine all of a gulp and swallowed the crust. There was no sound in all the place but the sound of his teeth biting it up. Then he put his hand on the coffin, standing up tall in his high black hat with a gleaming pale face, and he said, I give easement and rest now to thee, dear man. Come not down the lanes, nor in our meadows, and for thy peace I pawn my own soul. Amen. But when Gideon said, Come not down the lanes, nor in our meadows, I thought he said it like somebody warning off a trespasser. So those of you who know Mary Webb well will know that I edited that passage a little due to the amount of time I have today, but there will be more videos on Precious Bane. So thanks for watching. Please leave a comment below and look out for the next in this series of videos that were made possible through National Lottery Community Funding.